And you're welcome back to Off the Ball Saturday here on News Talk. John Duggan with you three to five. It's Kerry 3 8, Mayo 11 points in the first of the ladies' football semi finals. Also at the Open, Rory McElroy tees off at 3.55 from uh, 10 under par, 3.45, I beg your pardon. He's not out before the leaders. The leaders are Cameron Smith and Cameron Young. So Smith 13 under leads, Young on 11 under, they're out of 5 to 4. McElroy and Victor Hovland tee off at 10. Uh, on 10 under par at a quarter to four. Uh, the early mover, Thomas Peters, has gone to eight under par, uh, six under for his round through 13 holes, and Shane Larry's picked up a shot to move to seven under par now in a tie for ninth. Now, the Saturday panel. We're concentrating between now and four on tomorrow's All-Ireland Senior Hurling Final between Limerick and Kilkenny, the champions against the challengers. 3.30 start at Croke Park tomorrow. Joining me to look ahead by the moder- wonders of modern technology, the former Limerick All-Star, Ollie Moran, ex-All-Ireland winner with Kilkenny, Michael Rice, and the man who lifted the Liam McCarthy Cup for Tipperary in the Hogan stand back in 2010, Owen Kelly. Michael, Ollie and Owen, how is the form? Very good, John. Good Thanks job. for having me. Thank you. Great to see you and hear you, lads. Um, I just can't wait for tomorrow, Michael. I was uh, at the COVID final in 2020 in December in the darkest uh, period of the pandemic for the whole country in an empty Croke Park, Limerick and Waterford. And this will be the first All-Ireland final when we've had fans and a full capacity crowd back for a final since the pandemic started. And Kilkenny are hungry seven years on since you last won one. It's a beautiful game. Sometimes we, we talk so much about the game itself. Sometimes we need to realise how magical the game of hurling is it's our national day tomorrow Michael and uh, I just can't wait for it I'm sure you're the same yeah I'm absolutely the same John um, like you said there's been a few tough years there and in terms of crowds and that we haven't had them and it just makes such a difference and I think it, it's really a case where everyone certainly in Kilkenny is very much looking forward to it in spite of the fact we're going in as kind of heavy underdogs at the moment but look that won't dampen our spirits I, um, just probably a lot of people wouldn't have given Kilkenny much of a chance earlier in the championship but uh, we're here now and uh, really looking forward to it Oh when I was at uh, Dublin Kerry last weekend and uh, despite the Dublin defeat it was just brilliant to see the Dubs and Kerry people in England after the game and the, the taverns of uh, the inner city of Dublin and everybody in good nature and the, the weather is going to be great tomorrow and um, I only realised when I was doing the research for this I didn't know you and Ollie Moran were cousins <laughs> You must be the only one Josh <laughs> <laughs> We are, we are have many a battle and uh, look some great memories there and you know what I mean I'd say nearly we probably came out on the right side of a few of the results but do you know what the trilogy is the, probably the most famous one of all those battles 2007 and we didn't come out on the right side of that result and it's the last time Limerick and Kilkenny were actually ended up in the all Ireland final so you know it's interesting but look great memories we had great battles and um, she's done uh, I'm surprised you didn't have that one <laughs> yeah, uh, Ollie. Was there any ever any frosty Christmas gatherings after a dunt you might have given each other six months previously? No, absolutely not. And I suppose that was the beauty because more often than not, um, as Owen said, they had the bragging rights, so we were very sheepish around uh, Christmas times and and any other family occasions. But uh, no, like Owen said, your commitment was great uh, growing up. Do you know what I mean? It's something. It's something you dream of um, to be able to match up against your 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 cousins or whatever. So. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's a very special thing. But look, that's that's the distance past now at this stage. So we've resolved any difficulties or any issues we ever had in the Ireland field long ago. So it's, luckily they were all parked up once the game was over. That's the GA, isn't it? It's all interwoven. Absolutely, Ash. That's that's the beauty of it. Like, and, you know, you, you need only go through teams even in Limerick or Clare or Cork, even like, you know, Tipperary are our, our, our neighbours. Like, and there's invariably... Uh, family connections like Anthony Nash, Barry Nash, Richie English. Uh, you know all all these guys have have uh, have uh, you know Dara Fitzgibbon have all connections um, elsewhere or whatever. So look, come here. It's it's a good thing. Which are as I said, that's the nature of the GA. Ali, you must be very proud of the Morrissey's, um Dan and Tom from your own club, Ahan. Ah, look, sure. At this stage, like a worn record, like they're you know they're fantastic ambassadors for the club all the way through their careers. Like they're you know they're model club men, which is the most important thing in every sense of the word. But you know they're 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 physically they're they're unbelievable athletes. Um, but like you know there is two that uh you know have have always worked very hard at their game. They've been very committed from an early age. Um, you know, came up through the ranks, and even you can see it. Like and, and look at this, well, the beauty of the boys. Well, they were always good hurlers. There was nothing ever special you know fancy uh, you know they weren't these these kind of uh, lads growing up that that people were going to say well these guys are going to be phenomenal senior hurlers but like they're they're it's just their attitude and I suppose they fit right into this Limerick team their their work ethic um uh, you know their honesty on and off the field 
And, you know, like at this stage, you kind of run out of superlatives. Like the guys, you know, there's a statue of Mick Mackey uh, at home in, in Castle Connell. You know, it's only a matter of time before these fellas are going to have statues up at some stage as well. You know what I mean? So, like, uh, no, look, they're great guys. Um, and we're, look, everyone in the club just wishes them the best of luck and hopes that uh, the day goes well from tomorrow. You know what I mean? It's a huge, huge occasion. But the lads have been here before. Um, and and there's no doubt that that they represent themselves and them and their club and their family the way they've always done. You know. Would you've uh, ever dreamt, uh, Ali, when you're playing and obviously you lined out in 07 against Kilkenny that it would have got to this where Limerick are winning what uh, three All Irelands in four years and going for three in a row tomorrow? Uh, look, absolutely not. Someone said coming out of 2018, like you know, I met I met an elder statesman who said, you, you know, I can die happy now. I've seen Limerick. Um, kind of climb Everest and reach the top. And I suppose we all kind of came out of Crow Park that day. We were just elated. There was no one thinking of, you know, winning um, successive All-Irelands because, like, you know, we were nearly saved after 2018. Uh, and look, never in our wildest dreams did anyone ever envisage that, uh, you know, you were going to have the run since then, like obviously with the blot of of uh, of, of uh, 2019, like but ever since just been an absolute roller coaster, like, you know, there's no point in saying otherwise. Like, this is the greatest generation. Like, I, I've always heard guys locally talk about the Limerick team of the maybe 30s and 40s, and they were, you know, they were they, they were a fantastic team of their era. Like, but this this team has just taken it to a whole new high altogether. And I suppose the beauty, John, is that these guys are they're in that bubble at the moment where you know they don't. I don't think they realise it themselves. It's kind of like you know it has it has shed or or, or um, you know very similar to the to Kenny team. Um, growing up that like you know they were so used to winning that it's hardwired into the next match the next match the next win um, so I think the beauty of it is that you, you know they're not aware of their legacy yet which is great but uh, look I, to answer your question I, I don't think anyone would have foreseen back in 2017 even that they'd be on the run they're, they're currently on TJ Reid Owen Murphy and Podrick Walsh the only starters Michael um uh, with all Ireland medals who played against Clare so the, the hunger is now I suppose being regenerated in Kilkenny for the Liam McCarthy Yeah I'd agree with that I, um, as you said there's only three starters with all Ireland medals back in 2015 and then there's a bit more uh, kind of on the bench as well when you look at Conor Fogarty and Richie Hogan is there as well with, with medals and um yeah, I think back to my first All Ireland I ever went to was 1992, and there was nine years of a gap for Kilkenny to win All Ireland, and that day was against Cork, and I suppose it was the day I kind of felt, Jesus, I really want to do that as well. And um, I think these players, they've lost um, 2019. A lot of them would have been involved, and they would have lost. And then two hard losses in the last few years in semi-finals against um, Cork and Waterford. And I suppose the narrative was that we were miles away, but I think my feeling would be. We were there, thereabouts, uh, in terms of we were getting to semi-finals. First one against Watford, kind of was going well, and then the second half kind of just fell apart a small bit. Last last year against Cork, I mean, it was obviously went to extra time, so you can't be that far away. Of course, then you do look at the finals and say, well, hold on, look at the way Limerick went and kind of pretty much destroyed Watford and and Cork in those finals. So that is a that is a, a concern, obviously going into the final that you're coming up against an awesome team at the moment, but. As I said, it's great to be there, and I don't think the players will be kind of like me saying it's great to be there. They'll be saying this is an opportunity, and it is against a serious, serious team. But I look at the, the blend that's there at the moment, and like you said, you have the All Ireland winners, but you also have a few players that are there a couple of years now with Hugh Law or Tommy Welch in the full back line, and then you have the own Cody, Adrian Mullen in the forwards who are really playing well at the moment, and then you have the really new guys first year out, Mikey Butler and Keane Kenny. So I kind of I think everyone in Kilkenny really likes this team because of the mix of players, because of their attitude, and because of how they go about their business. And always look, it's the Brian Cody attitude for the last twenty three years and beyond. Um, in Wicklow, Kenny is to to give a hundred percent on the day and see where it takes you. We're speaking to Michael Rice, Owen Kelly, and uh, Ollie Moran on the Saturday panel about tomorrow's hurling final. Limerick and Kilkenny throws in at half three. The day of the All Ireland, Owen Kelly. Like in two thousand and one, you're nineteen years of age. You're playing against Galway in the final. Nine years later, you're captaining Tipperary to win. Just maybe talk about the day itself. What stands out from those All Ireland finals day? Like the build up, the you know the rituals of the day, maybe the parade, what you're thinking, the match itself. What 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 is still vivid in your mind? Positive and yeah, well, and maybe what, entertaining. What's very clear is. is What's very clear is 2001, like you're only 19 years of age, that's what I was, and you just went with the flow. 
you just listened to what was going on. You just followed along. That was it. So that day and that weekend nearly just kind of passed you by. And we were successful in, in, in that all Ireland final against Galway. And you were thinking, this is great. This will happen every year. And Michael mentioned Kilkenny not getting back there for nine years, 92. And even we'll say seven years now since they've won all Ireland. They've been in a couple of all Ireland since. But like we didn't get back to all Ireland to 2009 then. So there was what? An eight year gap. And then you were programmed in to how you had it to get your routine in place. Um, Liam Sheedy was excellent. I was only reading a piece during the week which brought back some fond memories of just, he calls them the one presenters that you just want to get right, get the media night out of the way. We say get all the players' suits fitted and all that. Tiberi always went to Carton House for training camp maybe two weeks before or a week before the all Ireland final. So as... 2009, 10, 11, they'd be very vivid for me, even 2014. I saw it the same again when I was involved with the management team, Dean Sheedy, 2019, when Tip got back to the all Ireland final. But it was routine was a big thing. And I think that's the one thing with both these teams. Kenny used to be in all Ireland finals. Um, all those players that Michael mentioned, the TJ, the Owen Murphy, still have the word in, in the ear of the younger players just telling them what's required. And Limerick. And I suppose a team like Limerick, they're just so easy going about an all Ireland final now. They know the routine. They know what needs to be done. They know all the boxes need to be ticked. So that's why I think you're going to get an all Ireland final that both teams are going to be so tuned in and so focused. Maybe Cork might say they got a small bit of the logistics maybe and even the preparation wrong last year. And it's massive when it comes to an all Ireland final. But look, you're just so focused and you, you do try and enjoy it as well. Like, you know, you have your... Your, your nights where the sport just come in maybe two and a half weeks out and you know you get to sign autographs and that with the kids and that and meet some of the local club guys that come up just to wish you the best in that but but after that then you get that out of the way as early as possible after that then you're just kind of tuning in to what's at hand but you know we had, we had some fond memories I suppose of uh, Pat Shark coming into us and having a bit of a crack and a bit of a laugh with us and you know, those are, are things that will definitely stick in your mind when you think back on the on the preparation side but you know, Liam Sheedy mentioned it during the week in, in one of his articles where fun was a big part of his preparation for our, our squad, our team. And definitely we had some uh, great, great days uh, in Carton House and guys like that coming in to, to, to lighten the mood, I suppose. But that was the preparation. And thankfully for most of those all Ireland finals, it, it led into the performance. And that's the big thing for Brian Cody and, and John Kiley this weekend is just getting that performance. But I think both teams are so used to it that they'll they'll bring it tomorrow. Um, Shane Larry's just made a second eagle in a row. He's chipped in on the 10th hole to go to nine under par at the Open. So himself and Thomas Peters are the leading players in the course on nine under par. Cameron Smith tees off at five to four from 13 under with Cameron Young 11 young under and Rory McIlroy 10 under. Um, Ollie Moran, did it all just kind of pass you by a bit in 2007 when you played Kilkenny? Maybe there was nothing you could have done against the greatest team of all time until this Limerick team. But you were like, you conceded about two, three in the first 10 minutes to no score. Uh, yeah, but I suppose um, personally, um, probably uh, look, you know, Owen, Owen spoke about his memories, and then uh, I have the one to, re- to reflect back on in 2007. But yeah, look, I think definitely the hype in Limerick coming up to that that Ireland final in 2007 was was massive. It was, it was the first All Ireland that we were in in whatever it was 11 years, so it was uh, you know an amount of hype. And you know, my abiding memory of that particular day was just a. Uh, the crowd coming out onto the field, we were absolutely, you know, it probably upset us more than it did to Kenny. Like, you know, to Kenny were poking around as they normally do over and back. Uh, I remember we came out and it was like just a wall and eyes. And uh, actually, you know, it was, it was maybe uh, the first few minutes of that game, actually we settled okay, but then they just hit us for two, three. But like, again, I think that's kind of the common perception is that we just froze in the day. That, like, you know, there was an eight minute spell there where, where, where you know, Kilkenny did to us what they did to probably every team around that generation and they absolutely just blitzed you. Um, so, again, the narrative around that was it just didn't show up. But I actually would have thought that, you know, for for the most part, um, we were very, very competitive. I don't think Kilkenny played out of their skin that day, but, I, you know, we were a physical team and I think we were able to match them physically for the most part. But, look, the problem was you're trying to claw back nine points um, of, of of a lead against against the greatest team, and obviously you know time proved that was they'd won they'd won in 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 oh six uh, you know they'd beaten their duck uh, with Cork we met them in oh seven and they were just cranking up at that stage you know what I mean so like look there was no shame in it um, I think we were a team too that had kind of come from nowhere that year and maybe there was a certain amount too of you know we beat Waterford in an epic semi final and. You know, you knew you were playing to Kenny, and you were kind of saying, "Okay, if we can be competitive coming down the stretch, we'll have a chance." Like, but that was kind of our mindset, which was 
probably in hindsight the wrong mindset uh, to have. But uh, but look, look, our preparation was perfect. Everything went well. The hotels, everything. But look, at the end of the day, I think there was no shame. Maybe looking back now, um, but uh, but that's what Kilkenny did at the time. They were just so used to that whole occasion, um, and and when they hit you, they just you know they hit you with with, with soccer punches. So 2018, were you in the crowd, Ali? Absolutely. I uh, shed a tear. I'd say first and only time I ever shed a tear in my life. Uh, I know it was a very, very emotional occasion, I have to say. Um, I think, you, you know, Limerick, like t- trademark Limerick, you know, value for money for their supporters. I think six minutes, I think it was two or three minutes of normal time left and we were, whatever it was, seven points up coasting. We were kind of, here we go again. It just had shades of 1994 all over again. Next thing, uh, I think was it was it uh, Connor Whelan got a goal. Next thing, Joe scored a goal. Before you knew it, it was squeaky bum time, and it came down to that epic last last free with with Joe, whatever. Like, and you just come here. I'd say I'd say no one from Limerick actually saw that free because I'd say their their head was between their knees, just praying praying for the ball not to go over the bar or whatever. But it was such an emotional occasion, and you know the cranberries ringing out, dreams r- ringing out. Like it was just a surreal moment. Like even thinking about it now, it was. You know, just spine tingling. It was so it was such an outpouring of relief as well for because we'd grown up just Limerick were always short, they were always the bridesmaids, they were they were always finding a way to lose matches uh, at critical times. So for that team just to get over um get over that 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 mental barrier, I suppose. Like you know, no different to watching Ireland playing the All Blacks this morning. You know what I mean? They beat them on on, on, on New Zealand side last week, went and matched like and that's kind of similar to what Limerick have have gone on since 2018. You know, like that occasion was just the homecoming, everything about it. I don't think anyone like nothing will ever match 2018. Um, and and there's no point in saying otherwise for for Limerick supporters. You know what I mean? It was such a the end of a famine or whatever. Like, but um, but as I said, the beauty is they've just kicked on relentlessly since. You know. Has it changed um, the way sport is consumed in Limerick now? Because obviously Limerick City has always been a huge rugby city. Soccer is always, uh, at amateur level, has been quite popular in Limerick. Are you having like young kids now, um, boys and girls, picking up hurls as their first thing to do, Ollie? Yeah, but like, uh, come here, John. Like, and again, this is kind of a, you know, I won't call it a lazy kind of a, a narrative out there that, you know, all of a sudden Limerick is is, is a hotbed. Like, like you go into parts of Limerick City, you know what I mean? Maybe more so the suburbs, whatever. Like, but Harlan was always thriving. And maybe historically, inner city Limerick, there was always a spread between rugby, uh, rugby GA and soccer. You know what I mean? But like, look, um, it's definitely in terms of profile, right? Like hurling now, and at some point, Central words, is definitely the sexy sport in Limerick uh, at the moment, and and would we'll definitely have a filled void. And that probably coincided with maybe once the rugby fortunes probably ebbing, ebbing slightly in the last number of uh, of years. So, yeah, from that point of view, profile-wise, definitely hurling is top of the pile at the moment. Like, But again, the warden, like, like, you know, like don't be fooled into thinking all of a sudden, you know, uh, uh, Limerick started winning all Irons and now all of a sudden we have this underage uh, flood coming or whatever. Like, it doesn't work like that. Uh, even in, in our own parish, I see it. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's been probably more, slightly more of a take up, but not anything phenomenal the way people would uh, would think. But definitely, I would say um, the standards now, even at underage level, and the bar and and the quality of underage coming through, even at under thirteen, under fifteen, there now, like it, it is at a much higher bar. So if that's any, I suppose, um, consequence of Limerick's success, well, then it's a very positive one from that point of view. Like, but that's maybe how I'd read it now. You know what I mean? Because rugby is still going to be strong in Limerick soccer. There's still areas of Limerick that are still going to be strong, like so. So it's not like but this is the death knell for, for rugby and soccer uh, in Limerick. Okay, uh, Michael, 2009, you win four in a row. You're kind of this is your first real big season in the Kilkenny team. You win an All Star, and then you won an eleven again. What, I know you're on the panel at various times, but these are the two really big days for you. What kind of stands out from those those days? Obviously, four in a row, it's never been done. Uh, yeah, four in a row stands out, but I kind of, as I think I've said before, and maybe it was with yourself, I actually said it as well, that the kind of 2009 for me wasn't really four in a row because I was I was on the panel for three in a row and was on, uh, on and off different championship matches through that time. So that was the first All-Ireland I started, big one against Tip as well. So, I mean, that was, uh, I suppose, 91 was the previous time we had met in an All-Ireland. So there was a lot of build-up up to that. And for me, I think the thing that stands out was probably the sense of occasion um, 
and the feeling that I suppose everything I'd worked for was coming to this day in, in a sense that I suppose every sacrifice that my parents had made for me and the, everything that the people in Carrick Shock, my club, had done for me as well. So you do feel like you're representing more than yourself on the day as well. There is that heightened emotion. It's a very, very emotional day, but what you actually have to do is completely keep your emotions in check. So you even see this morning with Pete, Peter Romani afterwards ball and crying, but he wasn't going to be ball and crying 15 minutes into the match. He had to stay absolutely focused on his job at hand. So there's huge emotion in the background, but you actually have to nearly quell it, uh, block it out, and stay nearly kind of ice in the mind idea and make sure you're in the right frame of mind um, playing. But Ali mentioned something actually that does stand out to me, and it was, but really in 2006 it was when I was on the panel first. Is that is that when you co- when you come out onto the pitch in Crow Park for most matches, there's a cheer and you get on with your warm up, and you can hear. So Mick Dempsey was training us at the time, so you can hear his instructions. But in 2006, and for every All Ireland that I was involved in, that wall of noise, that Ollie said, that hits you, and suddenly you go, "This is bigger. This is way bigger than anything I've been involved in before." And that's where a player can possibly lose focus or get overwhelmed by it. Um, again, it's about focusing on the small parts and leading into it. Then you're into your warm up. Whereas then uh, you couldn't hear what Mick Dempsey was telling you. You're only following what if a lad changed the drill. You changed with him because you couldn't hear anything. Uh, all you had was Hill 16 just absolutely roaring. It just felt like the noise never stopped for the whole 80, 90 minutes that you're there in terms of the warm-up and the match. And also what you find is everything is more dramatic. So back in 2009, as, as Owen will remember as well, they had a number of different chances for goals and PJ Ryan pulled off amazing saves. And it's up and down. And likewise in 2010, when, when Tipperary got those goals... It's more of a dramatic reaction, and as a result, it nearly affects you more in terms of, I suppose, how you react yourself. Your body reacts in terms of probably adrenaline. There's more about adrenaline bursts. I'm not sure if that's the case, but it certainly feels like that. Uh, and again, it's about keeping your emotions in check and making sure you're you're focused on your your job that you have to do. Did you feel like that, Owen, in those matches? You would have. You would have had, and you go back to that 2009 All Ireland final. You know, to where we were in a great position. Nick Sinkle Kenny get the penalty. And I think it put him a point ahead. But the next play, or the, definitely the next second or third play, ended up back in, the, in, in our net again. Like So Kilkenny scored uh, the second goal, which ultimately won the game from that day. Everyone will probably look back to the penalty. And yes, it was a big moment. No better man than Henry to slip up and bury it. But you know, it was the second goal that Martin Comfort got. But I suppose Michael mentioned it there. We probably lost maybe concentration for that couple of minutes afterwards. Because sometimes when you, you see it happen with teams, when they concede a goal, they'll ultimately maybe can't see the point afterwards you know the confidence is down everyone is feeling sorry for themselves you know and little small things like that whereas in comparison even to the year after Eamon O'Shea had the defence told before the game that when Henry Shefflin goes down injured basically that he was going to come in and tell them to get focused keep focused so you, you learn as you go along as well and even in those last probably 10 minutes in 2009 you know a couple of temporary defenders maybe gassed out like you know a couple of players Maybe substitutions didn't come on when they should have came on, but the year after then they came in like so. I suppose what I'm trying to say as well is it's great to get the opportunity to get back to probably redeem those little mistakes you think you've made from both management side and player side. We got goal chances and I did in 2009. We didn't take them. We got them in 2010 and we we took them. So you know, we had the luxury of probably of getting back to right to some wrongs that we thought we, we had done the year before. But, you know, this is this is different. This Kilkenny and Limerick, um, you have two teams that believe and know what it's like and how to win all Ireland. I know Kilkenny maybe haven't won it since 2015, but you know, Club All Ireland, a lot of those players know what it's like to walk those steps, the Ballyhale Shamrocks and that, and the Pier League with the Limerick boys. So it's just I think we've been looking forward to both these teams meeting in in this decider and you know, the physicality, we all know what, what that's going to bring. So, you know, Colin Lines probably has a a big job on his hands on Sunday and you know we hope he he referees it to what I think Hurling supporters want we want this game to be let flow and um, obviously he has to do it do his job but you know look there is changes things happen in all Ireland finals and it is a different day but to answer your question um, you know you just have to get on with it and focus is the big thing 
Uh, just a question on 53106 Owen Kelly. Can you ask uh, about the heat and its potential impact, perhaps slightly more on Limerick because of their size as our texture? Have you played in extreme heat, uh, Owen? I know there'll be plenty of water bottles around tomorrow, but... Um... Yeah, well, well, I, I have played in extreme heat, but I suppose I've seen Limerick up close and personal only last season in the Monster Final, which was an unbelievably warm day in Parky Keeve. I know, right, we had the luxury of the water breaks and they were still in, in the game, but... I suppose it didn't do Limerick probably any harm after half time when they got them in at half time. They were able to regroup. Um, they had the, you know, but it probably didn't suit Tipperary the Heat last year in that monster final. A couple of our players definitely after putting in such a shift to reach the intensity levels at the Limericks of this world and the Kilkenny's bring that I suppose looking back at maybe one or two changes might have just re energized the team, you know, whereas Limerick seemed to be able to kick on now structurally, they got, they got themselves right. But Definitely, it will have an impact. Definitely, and you go through the age profile of a couple of the players, you know, just a couple of guys over the 31 or 32 age age bracket. So it'd be interesting to see how they last at that. But I don't know, have the GA um, made any lead? You know, have they done anything that players can get water on board? Yeah, they will be able to. Uh, They'll be able to get water more accessibly on the sideline and that kind of thing. Yeah, well, look, that, yeah. that's common sense. Like, And I think that's uh, that's brilliant. So... You know, whereas before you couldn't even throw maybe water bottles in from the sideline, that was kind of banned in that. But no, I think um, once players get water on board, yeah, they'll be happy. But look, it will impact. It will have an impact, and as well, substitutions will be um, will be massive there now. And you know, they'll need to be very smart on the line at what stage to make these sub- substitutions from both management teams. Owen Kelly, Michael Rice, and Ali Moran on the Saturday panel previewing tomorrow's hurling final. We're going to go into the matchups and look at Limerick and Kilkenny in more depth after this. This is Off the Ball Saturday on News Talk. John Duggan with you through to five. Kerry are into the ladies' football final. They've beaten Mayo 4 10 to 13 points at Croke Park. We'll check in with Ashley and O'Reilly a bit later on. Donny Gold and Meath throwing in at four. At the open, Shane Larry has moved into a tie for fifth and nine under par through 11 holes, five under for his round. Uh, Cameron Smith, the leader, tees off at five to four in a couple of uh, few moments' time from 13 under par. Cameron Young is 11 under par. He's in second with Rory McIlroy out in about 12 minutes from 10 under par with Victor Hovland. So great stuff from Shane Larry. He's had back-to-back Eagles in his round so far. We're previewing tomorrow's hurling final with the former Tipperary All-Ireland winning captain Owen Kelly, the ex-Limerick All-Star Ollie Moran and the former All-Ireland winner with the cast in Kilkenny, Michael Rice. Um, Owen Keane Lynch, how much is this a... A blow for Limerick. I know he's not been in the team for most of the championship, but not having the hurler of the year is a blow. Yeah, it definitely is. You know, you'd be heartbroken for him as well. Like, you know what I mean, there he's such such an inspirational player, and you know, everyone wants to see him play on the big stage. But it's misfortune for him. Like, but it will have an impact on Limerick definitely. And I suppose you know, even if he wasn't going to start get this all earned final, you know, it's just when you look at that subs bench and to see his name, name name there would give everyone that encouragement and that lift even in the dress room, you know, and even going up on the bus, leaving the hotel and that. But, you know, from a positional sense, then like, you know, playing him at 11 there, you know, he could just give something different, we'll say, you know, and especially the likes of Richie Reid, you know, it's Richie's first all Ireland. Keane can come out, he can pop here and there. Like, so, you know, I suppose it throws, it throws something different that Limerick well not different that Limerick will actually bring because the Kyle Hayes will probably just end up at 11 and they'll just stick to the process like and that's probably the one thing with Limerick and I'm sure John Kyle mentioned in this in the restroom and he has mentioned in his interviews that look whoever's out we don't get on we don't talk about it we just get on with our business we get on with our process that's the big word that you hear with Limerick and as I said to you go back to that monster final last season um, I saw it at first hand you know Declan Hannan I suppose was you know, he was getting cleaned by Jason Ford. He had six from play, but he wasn't taken out of six. Like, you know, he's midfield just sat back an extra couple of yards. The half forward line sat back an extra couple of yards and their work ethic just went up, just went through the roof and they got the tackles in, which led to the intensity going to a, an unbelievable level. And then they just delivered ball into that inside line. And sure, we all know what, what happened next. Like, and you know, when Limerick play like that, don't stop well, and that's whether Keen Lynch is on the pitch or not on the pitch like you know but I suppose it's just a less headache for, for Brian Cody and his management team but um, look any day Keen Lynch doesn't play for any team he's a loss because he's just he's one in a lifetime type player Ali how to deal with the Kilkenny ferocity because we know what's coming it came in the 2019 semi-final um, and Kilkenny got too far ahead in a way and they played so well against Clare and they brought the ho- hooking and the blocking and the tackling how do you think uh, John Kiley and Paul Connerk will be be planning for that because it's going to come from the get-go. 
Well, John, to be honest, I, I don't think they'll be planning for it in the sense of, you know, you take that as a given when you play any, kick any team. So it's not like uh, this isn't in their DNA in Kilkenny. It's absolutely wired into them. And even watching some of their earlier uh, league games, um, I, I just, I was so impressed with with uh, their work ethic. Uh, I just thought it was on a level that this team hasn't produced in the last number of years. So like, you know, it came as no surprise that all through even the early rounds of the championship, they were at that pitch. Okay, might have dropped slightly maybe against against Wexford, but but other than that, I think it's it's been at a really really high level. So like, look, uh, John Kiley and Paul Kinnark and all these guys, right? They don't need to see endless videos of Kilkenny to know what Kilkenny are going to bring on Sunday. So like, look, from my point of view, I, I'd actually turn that around the other way and say that unless we bring our levels of physicality that we know is in Limerick as own refer to there, you know, when Limerick need to go to the well and they need to dig deep and bring that level of physicality out, they will bring it out. Um, so I suppose, I, like, I don't think they're going to plan for it. Uh, you know, they'll have identified um, the main men for Kilkenny in terms of trying to trying to take the wind out of their sails early. And by that, I mean, negate them early. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, and one guy in particular that by his own very high standards, I don't think has had fantastic championship yet and, I, and tomorrow I think he's going to be a key man as Willow Dunne like because he's such a uh, you know like you know we mentioned Peter Mahoney earlier on this morning like, but but he is the guy that sets the tone in terms of physicality and I think if he can even do that early on like if I were uh, John Kiley or Paul Kinnard, I would be getting my big physical leaders to you know our half back line our midfielders our Kyle Hayes that is for Seamus Flanagan to really impose themselves physically and I think look it's it's going to be as physical a game as you're going to get because you've two absolute titans coming head to head uh, tomorrow. Um, so like, look, I don't think it's going to be a quarter past or given. Um, but I do think, and and again, I think some of the lads mentioned earlier on, the heat tomorrow is the big big variable. And what's going to happen is like you're not going to be able to sustain that level of physicality for seventy five minutes tomorrow. So what you're going to see is. Uh, maybe towards the end of the first half and certainly as the second half drags on you're going to see physicality levels are going to drop and it's going to be survival of the fittest uh, in terms of who has the most in the tank and again the other factor which I'm sure you're going to talk about is um, you know players in off the bench because players definitely are going to be coming in off the bench a lot sooner tomorrow than maybe they would have been here before yeah, and Ollie, uh, like David Reedy was brilliant the last day. We know Dermot Burns has been fantastic with the place balls. Uh, how do you kind of uh, assess what's happened in the last couple of years? Because he beat Waterford by 11 points in the final. He beat Cork by 16. It was an amazing performance last year. It's been a lot tighter this year. But are those tight games possibly going to stand to Limerick? Because they know they can dr- dig it out. They did it against Clare, against Galway, Ollie. Oh, they have. Like a, Look, again, from a Limerick perspective, watching the All-Ireland semi-final against Galway, like I... You know, I think Limerick got the best possible performance or the best possible outcome in terms of winning a game against the head, probably got a lot of marginal calls in their favour, um, were beaten in some areas. So I think, you know, the whole high of getting to an All-Ireland final, like that was put to bed very, very quickly because I think a lot of guys would probably look back on the semi-final and say, you know what, we were we were 6 out of 10 and 6 out of 10 won't cut it against the Kenny. So I think from that point of view, Limerick are the team that have, way more scope for improvement whereas you know, Kilkenny probably had the perfect performance against Clare everything happened for Kilkenny nothing happened for Clare um, but you know their 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 conversion rates were off the charts their physicality everything about Kilkenny that day was you know close on perfect so I think from that point of view I just think Limerick have have um, the advantage ironically enough because you would think Kilkenny are the team with the best form coming in but I think Limerick are the team with the most scope for for uh, for improvement, like so, so maybe that's that would be my assessment, maybe of of um, of how it could possibly play out tomorrow. Um, Michael uh, Brian Cody, we know is a traditionalist, and uh, it's very much fifteen on fifteen most of his Kilkenny career as a manager. But Conor Phelan's been working with the team. They obviously they can play between the lines and play it a bit shorter as well. Um, how do they deal with the, I suppose, Limerick have even evolved from 2019 to now? So the slickness of Limerick, the, the movement of Limerick, how do, do we feel Kilkenny will deal with that? Are they going to push up on the Limerick defenders and not give them time? What would you see if, uh, maybe um, coming out of the Kilkenny game plan tomorrow, Michael? Yeah, it's really hard to say. Um, when you're speaking about that, I, I remember watching a league match, I think I was with, working on a match with TG Carr and it was Limerick to Kenny in Nolan Park and you could see Limerick had kind of been it's what happens to a team after they win the All Ireland final. Suddenly, there's 
there's this belief in what they're doing, complete belief. Like they're maybe they weren't a hundred percent sure against Galway, they got over the line, and next thing they're all playing with confidence. You see Dermot Burns going to a new level, Dan Morrissey going to a new level, and that's what they've done. And yeah, they're able to they're able to work that ball out and play it every way they want. That day they were able to drag out the half forward line or or the like Kenny half back line, play a short one maybe to Tom Morrissey, and then the next ball play it long. And that's what they've been doing. Um, and they're so good um, in terms of. Ali mentioned Will O'Donoghue, and I think, look, those two boys midfield as well are another thing that Kilkenny need to keep an eye on because they are the link men. They're able to, like Will O'Donoghue, a lot of times just gets the ball and hand passes it off, or he breaks down play, picks it, and leaves it off to somebody else. So um, it is a tricky one for Kilkenny. Like you said, Brian Cody, traditionalist, it, to, a, to a degree, I think he I think he, he moves with the times as well. I think we can be kind of codded into this idea that he's. Uh, he just wants to play 15 on 15, man on man, and that's it. I think he's more than capable and willing to roll with the punches on that. As we saw against Clare, as we saw against Galway, there was a development in Kilkenny's play. They were more than happy to work the ball out and give it, look, I suppose the mantra that's often there is give the ball to the man in best position, whether that's 60 yards away or whether that's 10 yards to your right or your left. Um, so that doesn't really change that much. You're asking whether they, they push right up. It's a tricky one because what I find with, with Limerick, and you've seen it, we've seen it a lot over the last number of years, is they're able to find puckouts into pockets of space. So if you push right up uh, and you follow even Darrow Donovan and Willow Dunhu, um, there's pockets of space behind that that half forward line can kind of come together in that group in the middle and break off into space, or a corner forward comes out and collects. You also have the option, uh, the, the situation is if you don't follow, follow the likes of O'Donohu or O'Donovan in into that, the, that kind of half back line area they can receive the ball and get an attack going uh, very quickly. So, look, I would be surprised if we push right, right up um, and and do, make them go long from the start. I would be surprised if that happens. But I could see the merit in it in the sense of uh, over the years, we've probably always backed ourselves in our half-back line being able to win ball. And uh, with Mikey Carey and Richie Reid and Paddy Deegan, I, I'd be happy enough for ball to be coming down on them. Now, granted, you're up against six footers plus all of them in terms of uh, Gerard Hegarty, Kyle Hayes and Tom Morrissey but I'd still I wouldn't mind arguing the toss on that landing down and letting our midfielders be there for breaks as well uh, and I suppose for us it's a case of I, I mentioned the idea that Limerick just went to a next level after beating uh, winning that All-Ireland in 2018 well every team has to go through that at some stage and I'm hoping tomorrow is the day that they, those players that we see the likes of the Mikey Careys, Keane Kennys, uh, Connor Brown in the middle of the field, that get a win tomorrow and then they become different players as well with that confidence of an all final win behind them. It doesn't look like uh, Brian Cody's passion has uh, dimmed in any way, Michael. Would this be his crowning achievement, a 12th All-Ireland win if he does it? Yeah, I, it's very hard to judge, but I would probably think so, yeah. The, like, I mean, I think I've been hearing from probably early days when maybe... 2003 that he won that one oh he'll go for three in a row and he uh, we ended up losing out to Cork oh sure he'll go then uh, then he goes on and DJ Peter Barry John Hine retire in 2005 end of 2005 oh he'll go now and he goes and wins four in a row uh, we lose the tip in 2010 he'll go now he comes back and he wins 11 and 12 uh, 13 doesn't go well and then back again 14, 15 but I suppose what everyone's looking at is the gap, the length of time, the seven years, and probably the the, the bit of criticism that has been there over in those few years. Because look, um, people do look look for all Ireland's nearly every year, um, and that's fair enough too. But uh, it probably would be his crowning glory in the, in the sense of going against a team as well that have been so good and at the top of their game, and they are at the top of their game right now. So it probably would be the best, yeah. Owen Kelly, what is the key to victory for both teams? What are the key matchups in your view on that pitch tomorrow? Yeah, I suppose, look, Kyle Hayes, Richie Reid is going to be a big one. And a half forward line in general for them. You know, Gerard Hegarty and Tom Morris probably haven't been their usual self, we call them. You know, their, their tackle rate, their scoring probably hasn't been what we've seen previous couple of years. But look, big game players they are. And, you know, look, no better day than all earned final day to produce it. But, no, Kyle Hayes, Rich Reed. I suppose the big talking point, like, is the farm Aaron Galan is in at the moment. Like, who will pick him up? Like, you know, if you Lawler picks him up, he's a great man marker, has that pace to get out to those diagonal balls that are that are coming in. And 
No, you can go back to the 2019 game as well. And look, we all know what happened that day. Will we see a, sim- a similar performance from Kilkenny where they'll just hit everything that moves from the start? Which they did. You know, they really got into Limerick's faces. Uh, unsettled Limerick air on, which we probably haven't seen from any any team since. Um, you know, and then I suppose, you know, tactically that day, Kyle Hayes was at, ele- at 11, but his role probably after 18 or 20 minutes was nearly to come out and pick up TJ Reid, who was sent a forward that day for Kilkenny. Graham Mulcahy went dropped in to 11. So I don't think Limerick will go down that road. You know, I don't think it probably worked that day. They had to spend a lot of energy then to get back into that game. And sure, we all know what happened near the, the end with the line ball, you know. But look, TJ Reid is the big one on the Kilkenny side. You know, will they play him inside? Will they go along? Because you know, with that heat as well, playing through the lines against Limerick, you're asking for a lot, Annie, because with Will O'Donoghue, Dower O'Donovan, even that half-forward line, you know, it's hurt. It's hard to get crisp ball in, we'll say, or short ball. You know, they'll break it down. So, Kilkenny have the one thing, 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 they have the one thing with Kilkenny is that they can go long. They can just go long. They can win that ball. Owen, Cody, Maren Keown, especially TJ. Like So, you know, they'll probably cut out maybe playing through the lines for some part of the game and, and just go direct. And, you know, it takes out a lot of energy uh, as well being spent maybe working the ball and going into tackles and that. But... No, I think Aaron Galan and New Lawler will be the big one because Galan is in hurler the year form. Um, you know, he's hitting five, six, seven points from, from play. Like so, you know, if the shack is can be put on him, it'll definitely give Kilkenny more of a more of a chance. But yeah, no, look, there's gonna be interesting matchups all around the field. So we will we'll have to see when we get there who's who's picking up who and, and who's doing what. Audie, what do you see as the key battles in terms of personnel and maybe the key for victory for Limerick tomorrow? Yeah, like <clears throat> And again, I suppose the modern game, um, like, you know, uh, head-to-heads don't happen as often as maybe they once used to do. So, you know, while we can speculate that uh, Richie Reid will pick up Kyle Hayes or, you know, um, Declan Hannah will pick up TJ Reid or, or, you know, people are talking about possibly Hugh Lawler picking up Aaron Gillett. Like, I just don't think it ever goes to to plan like that. You know what I mean? Like, possibly looking at, at, at the former Mikey Butler, maybe is he the man for... For, for Glenn, he did such a job and Tony Kelly the last day. Will he be earmarked? Um, but like, look, I suppose for me, I've 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 maybe uh totally changed my view on that insofar as it's it's the process, like you know, it's Limerick's um, you know, it's 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 uh you know their process, you know, and a lot of people talk about like, you know, for example, Limerick don't tend to go man to man or you know they won't earmark a certain player to 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 negate a click any player and they haven't done you know what I mean so like it's a case of are click any individuals able to to trump Limerick's process like and Limerick are tight at the back like but I do think there's been a couple of uh, chinks in the armour there as well like and they have been exposed and even Brian Concannon's goal forgot about the last time he like you know Owen touched on something that I think is going to be something that we're like personally I'd be fearful enough that if they do go direct because Kilkenny have one thing that other teams don't have their their, their ability to win primary ball is probably better than anyone else's uh, in the country and again t- tomorrow won't be a day in my opinion for you know recycling ball playing balls through the line like I do think there'll be a lot of traditional old style hurling where you're going to have to go direct now not to the point where you just give it away cheap or whatever like but Kilkenny back themselves every time like that and I think you know they've got a couple of major ball winners on Cody again, people are talking about Aaron Galan. Like on Cody for me is just, uh, he, you know, he's he's a fantastic uh, uh, guy to get ball into. He's a natural ball winner. Keown, Adrian Mullen, TJ Reid, Billy Ryan, even like he's a big gangly guy. Like so, like I think this is where maybe I'd be fearful slightly. You know, while Limerick have a big half back line, they're not necessarily the greatest man markers, with the exception of of uh, of, of Sean Finn. You know what I mean? So like. You know, Limerick trust their product. Barry Nash is in the form of his life, but again, he's not a he's not a man marker. You know what I mean? He's he he's a he's a uh, he's a, a guy who creates uh, uh, opportunities, whatever. So, like to me, that's going to be the big thing. Is you know, will Kilkenny try and expose that maybe lack of uh, um, you know man marking that that's that Limerick go with maybe stretch it tomorrow? Uh, look for me if you're talking about one, yeah, definitely. I think Kyle is and Richie Reid for me. Kyle Hayes is just one guy that again has has proven form on yeah. an Ireland final day, or whatever. And I think he's definitely a guy who could come good on Richie Reid possibly tomorrow if he lines out at six. Michael, briefly, if it's Kilkenny, are going to do it? How? Uh yeah, I think when you're speaking about matchups, I'd be thinking the two boys, 
Uh, Morrissey and Hegarty can't be kind of given the freedom of the park. Was it a couple of years ago against Waterford? They came off with, I don't know, was it something like 12 points between them or 14 points between them? So, look, I think it's probably that we don't have that early on, certainly, that freedom given to Limerick. I wouldn't like Limerick getting a four or five point lead on us. I think that'll suit them down to the ground with Declan Hannon sitting back and just uh, conducting the orchestra, really. So, look, I think it, it goes back possibly to the 2019 model. It's bringing that middle section into an absolute warfare and uh, winning as much ball as possible and making sure that we get the supply inside. Uh, one probably thing little worried me a small bit against Clare was we probably did have enough of supply going in, but then it was Billy Ryan was inside in his own a lot and probably having to do a lot of that work. So where the ball might have always gone in the direction he was running, which is tough going on any lad and left and right, Galan and Flanagan inside one end and the Kilkenny lads in the other. And a lot of that movement, it's tough going. It's it's brings flat out the whole time. So to supply a ball, if at all possible, to the advantage of, of the, the Kilkenny forward. But look, that comes after all the hard work in the middle of the park. And uh, I know it's a kind of a cliche, the middle third of the pitch, but sure, that's, that is where it's won. That's why it's a cliche. It has to be whoever kind of comes out on top there. But my thing would be, I wouldn't just like saying, leaving off Hegarty uh, off out the field and Morrissey off out the field and saying, I will kind of we'll, we'll hope that we can cl- close them down We're using our own half forwards we probably do have to track them a bit more Owen Kelly who's going to win it? Yeah hard one to call and even on Michael's point they're like uh, 10 and 12 for Limerick I, I saw it up close last year at the All-Ireland Final Kyle Hayes was at 7 straight away Paul Kinnerk identified that the Cork halfbacks were pushing up on the Limerick half forwards and Kyle Hayes got a ball in front of me and you could hear the crowd were urging him on just to run up that that left side because he'd acres of space in front, but he didn't. He just zipped that ball into a diagonal ball in, and it just tells you the headspace that Limerick are in, even on that Ireland final day. I just think they've been here. They know what this is about. They stick to their process, as uh, Ollie mentioned there. I just think Limerick are going to get the job done somehow, but by God, I think we're in for an absolute, absolute thriller tomorrow. Uh, physicality, we love it. And Look, some of the best hurlers that have, have graced all Ireland final day are, are going to be on display. So just think Limerick are going to get get over the line, create their own little bit of history. Are you going to do us three in a row? Yeah, uh, I think so for no other reason other than, look, you're meeting, to me, the traditional kingpins uh, who go to their level on all Ireland final day. But I just think we haven't seen the best of this Limerick team. And I think they're they're saving the best wine to last. I hope they're saving the best wine to last. But... Uh, but yeah, look, I do think they're going to come up trumps tomorrow. Um, I just think maybe they have that little bit uh, of an edge over Kilkenny in terms of experience. And I do think that a lot of the guys that maybe haven't been at full tilt are going to deliver tomorrow. So look, I'm thinking four or five point victory for Limerick. And obviously Michael Rice, you'll be going for Kilkenny. I am, yeah, John. I'm going for Kilkenny. Um, I'm, I'm kind of, look, these are all hopes really, but I'm hoping that this Limerick team on the road kind of five years, love them are there together for that time. Um, I know Ali's saying that they'll come up to another level from the semi-final I'm hoping that's kind of a stagnation as, as such and uh, they mightn't be able to rise it to the, to the absolute supreme level that they can get to and I think there's a bit of hunger in this Kilkenny team because of those losses there's a bit of hurt and uh, I think that can drive a team a long way Michael and Ali enjoy tomorrow whatever you're doing enjoy the match and Owen enjoy the match as well as the neutral have a great day tomorrow folks thanks so much for coming on Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thanks, lads. Michael Rice, Sally Moran, and Owen Kelly on our hurling final preview panel. Plenty more tomorrow. We've got Tommy Welch at Croke Park tomorrow afternoon. May the best team win. This is off the ball Saturday on News Talk. Shane Larry has made a move at the Open Championship. He is uh, making back to back Eagles. He's just dropped one back to eight under par. Rory McElroy's just teed off from 10 under. Uh, with Victor Hovland there in the tie for third and we have Cameron Young on 11 under par and Cameron Smith on 13 under par they're just about to tee off the final round on day three at St Andrews where conditions are quite benign this is off the ball on News Talk we got latest in the ladies football semi-finals where Kerry have won the first match and Donegal and me they're about to throw in the second match we're going to actually go to St Andrews and Philip Quinn to get the latest from the Open after the news so stay with us don't go away you can text us if you want on 53106